Good morning, all you wonderful spikelings. I hope you're hungry because I'm your Michelin star chef, aspiring spikes in Danish Shark Typhoon. We are cooking with capricious Hellraisers and modern. Will this deck make our trophy count? <laughs> Go boom, or will it bust <laughs> our play point count all the way to zero? Stay tuned to find out. Remember to like, sub, support our sponsors. Buy something from the Spikeling store and pet a dog today. Praise Cloth. That's Chainer with the 34 months. Thank you. Welcome back. Okay, I had a wild weekend. Uh, I am back, and I've got a pretty juicy deck today. Um, I, you know, I, I was really obsessed with this card like six months ago. We played a lot of decks with it and I guess I'm just kind of back to back on the bullshit. Um, although it, it's been going pretty well, obviously like the Espergorios deck was a big hit for archeologists. We also were nine and one on Friday of last week with Bant Ephemerate before archeologists. And I've been wanting to play a capricious Hellraiser archeologist deck for like a really long time. Um, Moxfield deck. Let me just take a look. Um, oh, sorry, I thought I had it uh, up to date here. Um, I, <laughs> I'm not concussed, I promise. Uh, so I actually started to like look at the boom bust shell again because uh, a friend of mine, PT Bench, messaged me and said, What do you think about Leyline of the Guild Pact, Flagstrones of Toker, and Mine Collapse? So the, the idea is that you could use your Leyline of the Guild Pact to turn your uh, flagstones of Choker into a mountain so that you can use pay mine collapse for zero mana without really much downside. I think it's kind of an ambitious three-card combo. You need Leyline, you need flagstones, and mine collapse, and you need them all pretty early, which is certainly uh, certainly asking a lot. Uh, but I was you know kind of looking at it, and I was trying to figure out for a little while playing a, playing a build of... With Hellraiser, Archaeologist, and Ephemerate. Ephemerate is very good with Hellraiser. Ephemerate is very good with Archaeologist. Um, I I had a very difficult time getting the mana to a spot where I was super happy with it. Where like you just have all of these like white sources in a deck that has only red and blue early plays. Like Ephemerate is a later play. And splashing really just for favorite. It's not really another white card you really want, I think. And then also you do have triple red and Hellraiser, but you're usually not playing Hellraiser on turn three. So like the triple red casting cost does matter a little less. A lot of times I found myself like on turn five, like going uh, founding or archaeologist into Hellraiser. Um, so it, it is potentially possible we could still get Ephemerate into the list and still get flagstones. But right now, we're just in on the the artifact uh, mana. What's what's the one nice thing about the artifact mana too is you get to play Galvanic Blast. Four damage is just so much better than uh, <laughs> than three uh, at the at the moment in the leyline uh, or in the, in the Scion um, Yogmoth world. Uh, that being said, a little slow to turn on. I'm a little bit concerned about playing all these artifact lands in the pick your poison world, but you know we'll we'll just get some poisons picked. It'll be okay, I think. Um. So yeah, so I, th I think I ended up deciding just to be red blue for now. Could again get into the um, white splash, but this is, you have some. You have like eight super premium. The formula is really simple. You have eight super premium removal spells. You are playing cleansing wildfire and boom bust to take advantage of these artifact duels to either ramp with cleansing wildfire or destroy a land on turn two with boom bust. Um, and you can use founding the third path to cast either of these for zero and then flash it back uh, on turn three or turn turn four. Um, and you could also use Archaeologist to dig for these and fill up the yard for Capricious Hellraiser. Archaeologist also gets copied with, by Fable of the Mirror Breaker to like really good effect. You have 32 hits in the deck. Archaeologist, super solid enabler here, consistency enabler, blocker, good to copy with Fable, good to enable Hellraiser. Uh, Lauren Revealed, also a very important card to pair with Hellraiser, good card to flashback spell that goes into the yard pretty cheaply. Um, and then like kind of the eventual win condition of this deck is maybe like not that obvious. But you want to be booming early, and you want to be busting. Either using Capricious Hellraiser. If you if you Hellraiser boom bust, you can cast bust. And because we have you know nine indestructible indestructible lands in our deck, when we're busting, we are likely going to be destroying. We're going to be destroying all of our opponent's lands, and we're going to have some mana still in play. And this is kind of like you just you just draw, the, the goal of this deck is to eventually you know control the board, uh, control their lands, and eventually destroy all of their lands, and then take over with some flying Capricious Hellraisers and Fable of the Mirror Breakers. Um, that's the idea. I, I, we may do some tuning today. I got a little bit of testing in with this deck, but, uh, yesterday was eventful off stream to say the least. So I didn't get as many reps in as I might've figured out. Thankfully, Esther, uh, has some time off this week. Mm, I would probably mulligan this on the draw. Let's go ahead and give it a go on the play. Is Lori not getting more Thalraiser? We have, okay, we, we have, we have four. <laughs> 
Do you have a follow-up with Doctor? I don't I think so. Nobody really feels bad. We maybe sh- maybe should. Like I, I had like a little headache yesterday, but uh, I feel totally fine today. Esther feels fine today. Her best friend who's in the car feels fine. So we'll, we'll see. If we need to go to the doctor, we'll go to the doctor. But at the moment, I, I think we'll probably just be fine. It's okay. I don't, I don't want to talk too much about the nitty gritty and stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I appreciate the concern. Did I see Dak Vane's take on Ultra Phoenix? I saw, I saw the Vingevine version. Um... So I thought it was pretty interesting. I, I, had, I was working on the Vingevine build too. And like, so... I didn't really pursue it super deeply because you can't, I don't think you can build the Vingevine version to where if you just go Alter Phoenix, you always have enough to mill both players. But Dax build is like, we just, the, the idea is that you're just going to self mill yourself a few times. And then that's going to usually give you enough fuel to kill your opponent, but it won't always. So now he's going up on some cards. I, th- I think I, I'm watching the evolution of that deck. I think it's, I think it's kind of interesting. I also think it's like, Likely worse than the control or the zoo version. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm I, I, again. I'm just just kind of just kind of watching it. So they took one of my two fables here. Yeah, just just kind of watching. It. I'm not sure, but I, I think there's a pretty good chance it's just kind of worse than the uh, than the control or the zoo version. I think the zoo version is really good. I kind of want to get maybe another league in with that today. It take a couple days for what was yet. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It it we didn't get hit. It wasn't like a super super bad. That was actually streaming the deck. Yeah, I, I I think I saw that he was streaming some of it again. We'll see out this weekend. This is cool. I, I again I I hope that it's good. But, but yeah, my 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 big issue is like you can't really go. Phoenix, alter into Phoenix and win on turn three, it seems very often, unless you have like a crab or something also on turn one. Let's slam a fable. Which I think is an issue. Uh, Cause like t- to me, like if you just don't have those turn three kills with the combo, like the, there's not like as much a point in, in even having it in the first place, but we'll see. Thanks. Thank you, Blitz. Appreciate you. You were 44, 44 and uh, the, uh, the birthday wishes. We'll see. I, I I don't know. I I I think I think just going up on some number of cards maybe just kind of solves the issues. But then but then another another issue I don't like about the Vingevine build of the Alter Phoenix combo deck is that your deck is entirely graveyard based, and so like that's what I liked about the Zoo deck is you're like you're like a leyline binding Zoo aggro deck that has a graveyard based combo. So if your opponent's bringing in a lot of cards to combat your combo, you just you have like interaction against you have a lot of good interaction against the graveyard hate and you could just like completely ignore the graveyard hate too that was something i really really liked about the the zoo build we were working on um and i i like being all in on the graveyard seems like it's maybe worse but of course it's just good to explore like all of the different builds you don't really need to get as focused uh, on this kind of stuff as i am probably so it looks like they probably have an orcish bowmaster here if they're thinking about responding to the the fable ability, which they I, I they should right, ETR and Thunder Junction PowerPoint. I, I'm I'm gonna get it out before the new set. I have a, I have a very busy week this week. I I had, I had a super packed weekend. I've got the MTGO Masters this week. I I will be working hard. I'll be playing very little Bellatro. All right, my hand is uh I think passable enough to not loot anything away at this particular juncture. Um, do you think we'll go ahead and attack? I really want to be able to double spell here. Maybe, maybe I should have archaeologist first, but then it, it, they're just always going to make this trade. I'm always going to want to like kill the bowmaster or something else. I would imagine, but I think we're gonna go archaeologist and then see if we can find a spell to cast off the founding of the third path. I don't really want to play the ring into the bowmaster at the moment. Not when I can just kind of effectively double spell. Wow, we bricked. It's pretty brutal. We have 32 hits for Archaeologist, is what it is. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just mill with my founding. Hopefully find another card. It's kind of unlikely we double brick, right? The 1-4 body is, you know, still pretty good here. Okay, we found on Holy Heat and Boom Bust to... 
to flashback here. Also, nine cards in the yard for Hellraiser is uh, always pretty relevant. Let me see. I didn't actually... I just... I know 32 is, like, more than I've been doing. Let me just get the geometric calculator. Population size, 59. Sample size. Okay, they besage you me. Interesting. They're Jund? <laughs> Successes in population, 32. Okay, we are... 9% to brick, which is still, like, higher. Again, again with archaeologists, it's kind of interesting where, you know, your brick, you're still enabling your other cards. It's kind of just... And then, like, you're setting up to, like, copy it with Fable later, potentially. It's a weird dynamic. So they're going to River Tears Charm to make me sack my archaeologist. Okay, I guess that is uh, acceptable. Next we're probably just going to use Founding to kill the Bowmaster and then slam the ring. You get Thundering Falls. So I, I I actually need to double check that the Moxfield is right because I had Thundering Falls at some point. Oh, sorry. I I still I guess I am concussed. I don't know. thought I updated the extension. Maybe I got too distracted. Um, no, look, it, it looks right. Oh, I, I, I had the, the, the deck command. The, the Mox field extension is right, but the deck command is wrong. Um, but is the deck list right? Because I had Thundering Falls earlier. I don't have any now. The problem is we just have, we just have too many tap lands. We, do, we, we, we need to minimize tap lands in any way possible. And this does include, um, the precious, precious surveil lands. I, 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 I always felt like the next time I played a capricious Hellraiser in modern, I would have, um, I would have surveil lands in the deck, but was not meant to be. Is archaeologist one of the best creatures ever printed? I mean, it's it, you know being a like a really playable modern two mana creature. It, yes, there are there are not that many playable modern two mana creatures. There's maybe like ten, <laughs> twenty. And so to be in that range, I, I do think is a pretty high praise. Um, also, Archaeologist is really nice in like this edict metagame that has developed. Um, just trying to obviously let's probably discard the wildfire here. So like you know, top top twenty two mana creature in modern is certainly one of the best creatures ever printed. Okay. So I think I'll just start off with founding on chapter one. And then I think I'm going to, oh, sorry. I should have used, I used the wrong removal spell. I could have, I could have uh, maybe killed the Liliana in response to a plus because they would have gone to five. I could use the heat, but instead we'll just, you know, put them to no cards in their hand, no permanence of play. We have the ring chapter two founding. Seems like we're going to be in. Pretty good shape here, and they just pack it up. Okay. So up a game against Jund. Uh, with River Tears Charm, I think that was something we played last week, right? I could see potentially wanting some copies of Engineered Explosives. I could see but just, like, like just running it back. Um, And like, like to, to to some extent, there's not really any card that looks like it's particularly weak to me. We will trim a founding for just like the one explosives. Look at the discussion. Is archaeologist better than dark confidant? MTG just so different now. I mean, it, it, it is an is it it isn't even a discussion. Like archaeologist is just better. It is a it is a good playable modern card, and dark confidant isn't. You know what I mean? It's like it's not even a conversation. Yeah, maybe maybe should have brought an Orvar for Liliana. Um, I'm gonna keep this. Got two removal spells against the Mulligan, the six on the draw. ETN new set PowerPoint. It'll, it'll happen when it happens. I had, a, I had a pretty hectic weekend, and I've got uh, MTGO Masters this week. I'm, I'm gonna try to get it out ASAP. Um, I worked on it some on Saturday. There's just so much to talk about. I need to I need to let it cook. Confidant has much stronger effect, except it's not the speed of games now. Uh, I don't know. If, I don't think speed of games is necessarily true or why. Um, like Dark Confidant is mostly bad because it's like it's incredibly fragile. <laughs> uh, 
I, I would say that that's more mo mostly it. I, I don't think modern is a particularly fast format at the moment. It's not particularly slow either, but um, they also got to fail croaks in the yard is pretty sick here. Yeah, yeah, I think not particularly fast, not particularly slow. Okay, let's use the blast. Maybe unholy heat can kill croaks. Uh... Like, you don't die on turn three that often. Turn four, four mat kick W. Besides, besides amulet, it's not that fast of a format. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's a good way to put it. Hmm. I think I should probably be ramping this turn. Where the Tron decks? Tron, deck, Tron is a, a popular modern deck, or at least it was when I when I you know left the stream on Friday. So <laughs> uh, I don't know if much has changed, but Tron was Tron was pretty popular when I I uh, went for my weekend. I say fast. I don't mean turns. I mean spells cast. Average CMC. Yeah, sure, sure. I I, I think average CMC is actually way up because <laughs> of Leyline and the Binding and Sia. But yeah, obviously not 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 really. You know what I mean. <laughs> we recommend timeless amulet over Titan to dodge the solitudes out of Gorios. Uh no, I think that that's not like a, str a strong enough reason, and I think that there's uh, timeless amulet is just like much weaker to disenchant. I, I would basically only recommend timeless lotus uh, or timeless amulet over regular amulet if I felt that there was just like. Sorry, let me think here. I think I want to get a different type in the yard, so let's discard a Hellraiser. Um, I would basically only recommend it if there was, like, almost no disenchants in the metagame. Uh, and, and, like, a, a significant amount of creature removal. Which, it, it has been pretty rare that uh, that has seemed like the case. So, if we hit Delirium, I'll cast it on Holy Heat. And if we do not, I will probably cast a Cleansing Wildfire. Although, taking this Founding and going, like, Founding, Cleansing Wildfire sounds sick. I guess I'm just going to take Founding either way and then go Founding, Heat, or Wildfire. Um, do I need? I guess I don't really need to kill either of these at the moment. What would I dis? What would I discard to? Yeah, if, if I, I guess I could just discard whatever I draw off the wildfire. Pretty easy. I could just wait a turn. Extra mana, extra nice. Maybe get island here. Nice. What inspired the marriage between Boom, Artifact Lands, and Hellraiser? Um, well, B B Hellraiser and Boom Bust are very good together. If you flashback Bust, you get to destroy all lands, and you have a bunch of Artifact Lands to just kind of, like, have won the game. Uh, Dog Potato with the 27 months. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Yeah, I did, I did a small early review on YouTube you can check. Um, I, I will be grinding very hard this week. You know, I indulge as my birthday. Was, I stared at the sun. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I did not. I only only during totality. Um, got rear-ended by a drunk driver. Dude, he hit, like ugh, it was it was tough. It was it was okay. Everybody's okay. That's all that really matters. Yeah, the eclipse was inc It was so cool. It was it it looked beautiful. Everything around just get like getting dark out of nowhere was just so cool. Uh, it was it was something I feel very lucky to. Have uh, gotten to experience. Hellraiser would be broken if you had the ability to choose. It would be significantly, significantly better. Okay, pick your poison, my founding. So this will stop uh, me from being able to cast the Hellraiser next turn. And, you know, they're going to activate Liliana, and then I'll go to eight cards in the yard, though. So I guess I could just six mana Hellraiser. They edict, <laughs> edict my archaeologist. Two cards in their hand. Bait Biscuit with the 28 months. Thank you. Welcome back. Yeah, we were we, we, we were pretty worried we weren't going to get to see Totality because it was pretty cloudy. Uh, but, like, just bait, the clouds just kind of moved, like, at the last second, so we got to see it. We, we missed maybe... We, we, we drove to an area... Uh, we drove to an area that was... Uh, I'm sorry. They're going to... Bowmaster me. We drove to an area that was... Uh, a little, like, had an extra minute of Eclipse, and I'm, I'm really glad we did. Also, like, a little less cloudy. 
Babisco, 28 months. Thank you. Welcome back. Hellraiser deck on sub anniversary. Massive W. Hell yeah. Magical, the 44. 44 months of raising hell. And non of the 25. Thank you. Thank you for the happy birthday. All right. It's been a while since we cast one of these on stream, huh? Guess let's go ahead and get a copy of the One Ring cast. We do get protection from everything, which stops the Lily on a down tick, which is really nice. They will get a Bowmaster ping. I think that's okay. Um. <laughs> Your friend is firing spikes. And then I do think I'm just supposed to, <laughs> supposed to bust here. I don't think I'm supposed to boom. They get noticed to be colder. Um, I didn't. I didn't really feel that. I, I felt the wind drop. I did. I did feel the wind kind of like quiet down or whatever. Uh, I did. I didn't really feel like it, it got significant. No, noticeably colder. So they they return their verdant catacombs here. They plus the Liliana. Let's go and discard our Sokins on. Let me get Croaksid here. Yeah, it was it was it was very cool. Very, very, very lucky to, to have it be on my birthday too. Super cool. Awesome day. I rented a party bus for our, our, our us and our friends to kind of drive to a better viewpoint and we just, you know, had a great time. Okay, so we're gonna discard the fable. We're at 13, then 15, then like likely 13 after tapping the ring, unless we draw a removal spell for turn. Um, that's kind of, you know, under a lot of pressure. We'll see what happens here. Okay, uh, per the perfect top deck. I cannot, I cannot possibly uh, uh, think of a better top deck here. We are not going to get to bust this turn, but. A small price to pay. So if they have Bowmaster, they don't get to kill my Hellraiser, so I'll just go ahead and tap this now. Yeah, truly too, truly ridiculous top deck there. Like, was it even off the ring? L literally only one copy. Good morning. Aspiring Spike. Okay. I think I'm just going to go Founding Chapter 3, read ahead. Flashback on Holy Heat. And then I'm not going to play my Steam Vents because I'm planning to destroy all lands next turn, and this is not a indestructible land. Okay, can't Inquisition Boom Bust. They are one card away from escaping Kroxa again. I think that they drew Bowmaster, so let me go ahead and bust main phase. So if they have Bowmaster, I would get to respond with the ring. Nope. Updated state of modern. <laughs> yeah, kind of, kind of almost an invisible uh, win condition. But yeah, this 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 is what you are kind of looking to do every late game is. Uh, Destroy all of your opponent's lands and not your own lands. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to add a gemstone caverns to the sideboard. I was thinking that I will. I wanted one of those. If we do another, if we do another league, Ward at the five months. Thank you. Welcome back. Windswept teeth. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and leave up the unholy heat. I guess. I didn't pick your poison artifact land on the slow start. I wonder if they had it. Yeah. I think we'll lose some games to pick your poison today. It's kind of just, you know, it is what it is. Jath with the one year happy anniversary. Welcome back. So if I draw an artifact land, will I wait a turn? Okay. Didn't. So I guess I'll just go founding and wildfire their elegant parlor if it resolves. Yeah, I've played Founding and Hellraiser before. The man the mana with Hellraiser is always so awkward because the card is so much red mana. I, I, I still firm I, I I still firmly believe if like if Shatter Skull Smashing was like a card to the caliber of um <laughs> I uh, uh <laughs> I'm not concussed, I promise. If it was a card of the caliber of uh Seagate Restoration, I think that I think that we use see a lot more capricious Hellraisers. Interesting. 
where like uh being able to like flashback the big mdfcs just is like so nice but obviously you just can't can't do that um you can't do that with the the red one because it's uh does it's an x spell what do you more tron list not running gemstone i think i think the first gemstone is uh simply correct in in tron i remember talking about this kind of like at length with the cfb team last year um I think I think that even like one main one side could be good, you know. To some extent, like your sideboard is kind of taxed, but I think I think the first copy of the main probably just should be uh, stock. So we didn't draw an artifact land. Yeah, that's, that's okay. Oh, interesting that they are just casting this into the founding on unholy heat. I do have an unholy heat in my hand. I kind of want to I kind of want to uh wildfire the Zaga Triumph. So let me let me go ahead and unholy heat the Omnath before the founding ability resolves here. Then let's go ahead and get the get, get potentially their only uh swamp load up. And then we have a castable capricious hellraiser with one, two, three, four, five, six out of nine hits for it. Things are looking good. It's nice you have some other incidental artifacts in the stack. We like a ring and, and fable the mirror breaker treasure tokens too. Um to enable Galvanic Blast too. It's not just the artifact lands. Speaking and, and maybe we're just gonna like double Galvanic Blast to opponent out of the game. I'm gonna go ahead and keep up on ring parity here. It uses my mana a little bit more efficiently. They have a force of negation. Okay, that's bad. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people ask about the PowerPoint. I'll get it out as soon as I can, but it will it will not it will you know not likely be today, tomorrow, Wednesday. I guess shooting for Thursday or Friday. It's kind of late, I know. All right, nice draw from our opponent. That force negation was well timed. Force definitely feeling like you know fair card again, or you know in these kind of decks again. Okay, just get the solitude down. Sure, five cards in their hand. It'd be definitely harder to blast them out of the game with them having Omnath. Okay, I'm gonna just. I guess I could mill first. But also, I could hit Lauren revealed off the Hellraiser, and this would this would like, or ring, and then I could just draw something. Um, that I'd rather do than cast this. So I hit, uh, I guess I'm just going to heat the Omnath then. And then let's just go chapter two to mill myself. And then there's a bust. Um, I only have one artifact duel in play, which kind of stinks. But if I, if I can bust, like they will maybe just die to their ring. Yeah, the, the 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 drunk driver hit me to get arrested. Pending my founding, finding my Hellraiser, finding the Hellraiser. So we'll, we'll blast the solitude. You know, the, these four color lists don't typically play like almost any counter magic, but that's also like a lot of times why they can be so easy to exploit. Oh, huh. Teferi would have stopped founding Chapter 3, so I guess we got an extra prismatic ending out of their hand. They go to bounce their ring. If we top deck bust, we we're in it kind of. This is another card that maybe keeps us in it, although likely not going to get to draw too many cards off of it. No beats with the 45 months. Let's go. Thank you so much. Okay, so wildfire them or wildfire... Let's wildfire them. Let's see if they have any any more basics. I don't think we you know, need another land here. Yeah, no more basics. Good to know. Ryan with the 31. Thank you so much. Glad you're liking the stream. No beads still, of course. So we have a third or second late land binding. 
to replay the ring potentially. What the fuck? Why? I mean, it's that. I mean, that's a two and a six seven. I guess seems so off plan for them. <laughs> Was just not a card I expected to see. I'm going to go ahead and kill the Teferi, I guess. So I actually grew, grew the Goy, if I go. I don't know. Probably going to lose this game. Let's have a ring in their hand. Feeling good about our sideboard games. They have no red mana in play, too, at the moment. Force of Negation and Tarmogoyf and Risen Reef in four colors. So, so different from, like, the stock list. Pretty interesting. I wonder if it's, just, like, one Tarmogoyf, too. Okay, let's, go, let's go to game game two here. The Force Negation of my ring was tough. So, we're going to have Hibernation to bounce their Goyf. Mm, I think Her Hearse is good against Rin, and maybe get with the extra Tarmogoyf value, we'll just play... Play one. I think going down on like two foundings against the Teferi deck also makes sense. We just play two hearses. Thank you here, game one. That that was game one. They didn't have Kihira. Um yeah, maybe I don't know. Two is kind of a lot. Is Trump okay? No, you don't you don't want to be like, I'm just gonna cast this shit for five mana, brother. They got it, 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 you can bring it in if they have like any colorless lands, but they they don't. Yeah, hibernation for the Leyland Scion decks because we're kind of cold to it otherwise. Let's 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 just play one hers. Yeah, hibernation's for any Leyland Scion deck because we at the moment are pretty cold to it without them. Management confirmed not restricted for timeless. Okay, that is an interesting development. What if we swap the red black bridges for white, white red and got suppression field in there somewhere? Um, suppression field's a little awkward with. Fable, not that awkward. And ring. So you do you play suppression field over ring, I guess? I have been thinking about a white splash, and I you know I was trying to figure out if, if, if there is any card that you want to splash for besides ephemerate. Heart Monarch with the six months, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, the whole year, huh? Okay, so because they Surveilled the ring into the yard. I can't unholy heat this goy. If, and if my, it's, my archaeologist will just grow it. So, so thankfully we drew untapped land too. Slam fable. Likely we'll be able to heat the goy at some point. It seems so off plan in their risen reef force of negation ring deck though. You know what I mean? But maybe they just do need the pressure. It's kind of an interesting dynamic. So our classic Teferi bounce the... Shaman, token for one, would of course not mind being able to slam my one ring here. I'm going to discard, I think just one Hellraiser. It's kind of weird, but I need, I need my land drop. I think I want this Archaeologist to enable Heat and Hellraiser, and I don't, I'm not discarding the one ring, so I think just one Hellraiser there. People have managed time must not read Mandarin. I don't know. I think it's it's they're okay to just kind of like they they said also in like a BNR over the weekend for Arena that um they they want they want to see how the format develops with MH three before really making a lot of decisions about how to edit the format, which I think is something that does make sense to me, right? Okay, so I can slam the one ring or I can try to find delirium off my archaeologist to heat goif and attack to fairy and get a treasure token, which seems like an incredible play if we can get it done. If we find another burn spell, that could be really good too. We do not get delirium. Could could honestly we could just save for bus. I'll I'll boom though. I think I'll boom the scalding tarn. So they have a force of negation, probably. It's in a weird place to start bringing modern to arena. They're not bringing modern to arena. They're bringing modern horizons three to arena. 
a modern on arena would be awesome i would love for more people to get to play the game you know it's very tough for magic players to um split their collection and and play multiple clients at once have you tried brewing kathos and modern yeah um so what do they have off this omnath mana second risen reef So hopefully it can keep Fable Reflection going if they have a Solitude, it would be kind of tough. It would be tougher to play with the Economy Arena. I mean, not not to the Arena Grinders. Is it only for Timeless? Yeah, I mean, so like, so like one thing, I think something that definitely happened when Modern Horizons 2 came out is some executive on Hasbro was like, hey, what is this set, Modern Horizons 2? What is, what is Modern? I thought, is that something that they can play on Arena? No. Why is this? Sh this is the most popular set of all time. Why is the most popular set of all time not on Arena, the client that we spent all of our resources and time dedicating ourselves to? I, 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 I firmly believe that they were like, "What the fuck? Why is why is this shit not on? <laughs> why is this not on Arena?" Dude, six seven unheatable goyf. So let me start off by heating Omnath. And then I'm gonna attack the Teferi and see if they see if they block. Maybe I should be trying to have. I, I mean, I could try to be blocking down the line. Um, it's tough. I think I just have to boom and heat Teferi. I guess they were never blocking, huh? Cut them off double white, double red, double green, double blue. They had white red, maybe that would be good. So Teferi stops my Hellraiser cast, so I, I do feel like it is it is the card I want to get off. Although, I can also pressure it pretty well next turn, and there's like a pretty reasonable chance they just have another Teferi in their hand. So I, I, I'll, I'll hit a, a Risen Reef instead. My opponent is evoking endurance in response. I guess this is just to get their um, reef triggers. Um, my clock is going down, but I wasn't doing anything. Would it be better to cast it for six mana? Yeah, I don't, I don't have six mana. <laughs> uh, and I am behind on board, so I, I need to use my mana to keep parity here desperately. I could maybe Hellraiser to flash back the bus later if I'm lucky. But I, I, I desperately need to use my mana to not fall behind any more than I already am. What is the point of playing Risen Reef Bill Masters Ace? It honestly isn't that big a deal, I feel like. I've been thinking about this lately. It's like you play Reef, you get a card, they Bowmaster it. It's like you you know, you're still just like at card parity. If you can have Ephemerate up or like Solitude in response, it's just like does it matter that much? Maybe it does. Maybe opponent's onto something with Goyf. I don't know. It feels so off plan. I I don't know, but maybe. It's interesting for sure. It's definitely it's definitely like looking very good this match. You know what I mean? I'm gonna cast the ring. It's gonna force of negation. I'm gonna go match three. Okay, not match three. I mean, her life total is just too low. I guess I, I should have just jump blocked. Oh, no, we're we're super cooked. Let's <laughs> go to match three, anyways. No one advice for card play. I'll play whatever you want. Uh, some decks can outvalue it. Reclamation basically always does. Certainly interesting. Uh, I think we can keep this on the play and then. Would Mulligan on the draw. Some upside isn't I just down? Yeah, I mean, just down's not a super popular card at the moment. Maybe more popular because of all the Kabus. Not that Goyf is also not, you know, good against just down. Okay, so up against a Living End variant, which I think is pretty, pretty tough game one. Maybe we can mill over a Hellraiser. Maybe we can find a... Uh... Boom to flashback next turn. Mill over two Hellraisers. Don't actually even find anything for the uh, the founding. 
What if it gets better with all the archaeologists going around? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Guess so. I guess, yeah, milling over two Hellraisers, I suppose, is fucking good, though. What artwork is that Lauren revealed? Uh, it's the same one, but it's, like, washed out. Like, I think these are, like, the in the holiday boxes or something. Opponent is, uh, raging, maybe? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Taking a screenshot. So I have to choose one. I guess I'll choose the one that's worse. Maybe I still... Oh, you always exile it. Okay, I see. So we'll definitely keep milling. And then... I think we are somewhat incentivized to be able to... Yeah, I mean, I think I think we'll be cycling Lauren Revealed if we don't hit, like, something really good. But I just want more good hits off the Hellraiser next turn, potentially. Maybe we'll mill a third Hellraiser. That'd be pretty funny. Boom would be good. We did we did find Boom. Yeah, I think you know, gonna gonna cycle and then gonna Boom next turn. Have I played much Dark Souls recently? No, have not. Squirrel to three months. Think we'll come back. Yes, yeah, so are they are they Bloodbraid living in or are they Cascade living in? At the moment, it looks pretty Bloodbraidy. Oh, they're the press the in they the press the enemy build. This build, I think, is pretty cool. This is the, I think, Menino Ne in, uh, innovation. But Elden Ring, excited for the DLC. I'm excited for the DLC. Um, I have not played Elden Ring in a while, though. I the Magic is just, I think, a little too interesting to be doing too much. Uh, I guess I'll cycle this now. Be interesting if my opponent just oh they can't just living in here they don't have any green mana wait what do they have red in their deck for oh this is not sorry this this they're not playing the same list as their last five though they looks like they are experimenting with blood braid probably so do they have five, uh, a delirium looks looks like they don't so I think I should go after their red mana. They force some negation, they they do have delirium. Muddle the mixture. I hate this fucking cards. <laughs> Pretty good against me though. Kind of interesting. So so they definitely they definitely don't have a uh, Shrivel Sage in their deck. They're definitely a Blood Brain Marauder build. Truffle the two years. Welcome back. Let's go. Best case scenario, I draw a Hellraiser and oh the wait, Boombus is exiled. Never mind. Hellraiser probably still the best top deck. Uh, I'm gonna cast Lorian Revealed. Yeah, another muddle the mixture. <laughs> Seems like not. Three pretty actiony spells. My opponent's graveyard is, I think, likely too stacked for me to beat. We'll see. They keep a card on top, which is likely pretty bad. Where are they getting with transmute three? Uh, blood, blood, brave marauder. The, the transmute cost is three. The mana value is two. That was good, Felipe. Thanks for asking. Transmute creature that comes back living is cute. Is there is there a transmute creature that is mana value two? Sweep the legs. Thanks for Twitch Prime. Hope you're doing well. Pony is a thinker. Awesome sweep. Thank you so much. They're evoking a grief pitching whale of the forgotten. A whale that would have been, I guess, three modes, but two of the modes not that relevant. They shocked in the in the breeding pool. So I I wait. They have breeding pool in their deck. Green sideboard cards maybe. They're going to transmute for a uh, Marauder and cast it. 
Yes. Good old five mana living end. Likely going to be more than enough here. Demir Infiltrator. I mean, the the body there is not, <laughs> not the best. So hopefully I can cast a ring. If I cast a ring here, I get to like... Oh, I have pro everything now. I don't have pro everything on the next turn. I only have one ring left in the deck. Wait, can, what if I cast... Can I cast the... Do, do these resolve first? Because if I cast the ring now, I get protection from everything, and then the griefs don't resolve, right? We might win, actually, because we hit, we hit a ring. And I, I guess my, my Hellraiser's being two fours is kind of the big problem. So... Galvanic Blast, the subtlety seems pretty good to start getting in more damage. Could also have Galvanic Blast the, the face and hope to draw. Maybe, maybe I should have drawn off the ring first. Yeah, but this is actually very cool. Cast the ring off the, <laughs> with living it on the stack, and now I have... I get to attack for four. Play the ring, attack for four. So I would need I still need two Galvanic Blasts or another ring, but I, I will I will get to draw like a ton of extra cards here. Cool game. I guess this was the secret to beating Grief out of Living End all along. Just Hellraiser a one ring. No, what the hell? I I definitely yielded till end of turn. I guess I guess I definitely didn't, but fuck, minus two cards here is so tough. I guess I didn't. Don't they have two wakers? I, I'm, yeah, it, this is two, two plus two is four. Okay, so I guess the plan is to just cast a Hellraiser Pro One Ring next turn. You have both yields on at the same time, I see. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, obviously I, I did, did mess up. So we have a three and four chance of casting the ring off of Hellraiser next turn at the moment. Is a transmute attack a new card living? I haven't seen it before. It, it's kind of interesting. I I I tend to hate the card model the mixture just because it gets suggested and like as like it's just super low card quality in in decks that are usually also pretty low card quality. But you know maybe it's uh maybe it is correct in their deck. My opponent finds another waker here. So we need to dodge a Force of Vigor, Force of Negation plus blue card as their last two cards. But I think if they had Force of Negation, they they as as the other mystery card, they wouldn't be wakering here. So they they likely like just found it if they have it. You know what I mean? Okay, so we're gonna stick to the plan. Nice. Did not uh twenty five percent chance there. Now we just have lethal next turn, so now they they have to do something or die. Um, I think I will cycle Lord revealed here, so I have a uh, all the man I could have next turn. They just concede. This was an early concession, <laughs> but I'll take it. <laughs> wow, that was a good game to win. Good game to win. Think about like what happens if I living in this into play, because it's interesting. So basically nothing. If I have just this in my hand and the grief, I could copy something, which would probably happen more than you would think. But let's not play it. Combination is for leyline scion decks. You don't really have a good answer to leyline. I think go black plus plus sign without it. Wait, does it work with boom? Oh, it does work with boom, and it works with cleansing wildfire. Okay, I'm I'm down to bring in the orvars. Yeah, Orvar bringing back Orvar with Living End is like weirdly, weirdly good in this deck because you you get to copy permanence with Wildfire and Boom Bust, and also like sometimes you're gonna get to discard it with Grief. Maybe maybe like a little lost in the sauce, but it certainly seems very fun. Here we kind of have the nuts where we get to go turn two Founding into Boom. Brent with the thirty months, thank you, welcome back. That was like just super fun too. Let's let's do it. Spike flying on Hibernation deck. Yeah, I just kind of had to be the right deck for it. Spartan's on a Mold of Six on the play. Can it only copy lands? Yeah. I, I maybe mean, that's not the best, but it just sounds so sick. I don't know. I, I wanna I wanna I wanna do it. 
I want to do it. Is that not enough reason? So Drew unlicensed her. This is a pretty good draw. Hers is like extra good against them. You just, you just keep them off to delirium. <laughs> then it's like, hmm. Do I still have a deck? Yeah, I could target Hellraiser with Burn Spell, but I did decide on most of my Burn Spells. How do we win against Resolve Living In? So it was it was really cool. So my opponent Living in did, they had two Greaves, and I had the Ring in my hand, but I also had two Hellraisers. And so my Hellraiser, one of my Hellraisers cast a One Ring from my graveyard to stop their grief from taking the Ring in my hand. And then I went Ring uh, from a hand, attack for four. Then I played another Hellraiser, cast, cast a Ring, attack for, uh, attack for four. And then uh, another ring tech for six. The other Hellraiser killed there. They're only flying blocker. About to be ahead 10 minutes on the clock here. Yeah, I I'm going to lead on the founding into boom bust. Well, that resolved fast. We get to boom again in two turns. I don't really like to comment on the MTGO drama, Nick, but I would not condone any bug abuse, of course. Huh, they have their own unlicensed hers. Which is kind of funny here. So I guess that'll stop my founding. Hard card to play around here. Dude, I might just cast Orvar next turn. Prob probably will. They have Hearst plus Force of Negation. Nope. Just taking their time. Decides, decides to not activate their Hearst in the turn. They don't have any red man available now. If they did, we would have to Hearst in response because they could cast the Blood Braid with Delirium already. I'd love if they hearsed back. <laughs> okay. Wait, what are they targeting my stuff? Okay, sure. Are they double queued? Uh, it's kind of tough to be like just like double queued in a league, but uh, I mean, your, your guess is as good as mine, brother. Orvar. <laughs> <laughs> so if we draw Boom Buster Cleansing Wildfire, we get to coffee the land that we target, which will be fun. Another ga another day, another gab raid. Think buddy thanks, buddy. Having some fun today, boom busting. We boarded an Orvar <laughs> against Living End. Uh Mostly for fun, but we're hoping to get to copy our lands with the Orvar, if, which also cleansing wildfire boom bust. Opponent's playing very slow. They're a tanker. We're ahead. We've used four minutes. They've used four, uh, 14. Some extra creatures to discard for value. Golem Gamer, thank you for the birthday. Wishes you all. Golem Gamer with the Twitch Prime, thank you also. Wild day yesterday. Took a party bus to go watch the eclipse in a better location. Saw totality eclipse was awesome. Almost didn't see it because the clouds did get to see it. Then got <laughs> rear-ended by a drunk driver <laughs> going to dinner. Crazy day. Thankfully everybody's okay. My car may be trash though. Living in board and hearse. They're playing Blood Brave Marauder instead of the uh, Cascade stuff. Yeah, they're definitely feeling okay. Esther's feeling okay too. Esther was driving. Uh, she was DDing, and then she's doing okay too. But like we w we went over to the guy's car, and he had like <laughs> I was I you know it took me a second to realize what's going on, but he had like. A beer can in his cup holder, and his back seat was like 
full, <laughs> full of like empty beer cases. I took some pictures of it because uh, <laughs> I, I like I like couldn't believe what I was seeing, and uh, it's just full of beer cases, beer beer in the cup holder. I've never never seen that in my life, and he just like he just like could barely talk. It was it was pretty fucked. Squee with the 53. Thank you. Welcome back. And then it was also kind of funny because he, he like he hit us like right by the police station. <laughs> so they were they were just like right there. That was kind of lucky. And um, yeah, I, I'm you know, lucky. Everybody's OK. OK, so my opponent after spending <laughs> a few minutes reading Orvar has untapped and activated their hearse. Good payout coming from us. Yeah, I think so. It, it also, also very thankfully. The guy had insurance, so shout out to him. <laughs> so I can use Galvanic Blast to copy something now. Surprised they didn't try to hit a run. Uh, the, 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 his his car was uh, not drivable afterwards. His car was he, he he did try to start it. His car wasn't drivable. Do we have Picker Poison protection here? Crew Hurst and Blast for copy. Yeah, I really want to get the copy, although. Just four damage is probably gonna get the job done. How does Texas insurance work? In, in Texas, you have to have liability insurance. So it, this, it's kind of messed up, right? Because so you have to have liability insurance. Of course, all insurance is just a scam, um, which means that the person at fault pays. But if your opponent, if, or sorry, if your opponent, <laughs> if the person who hits you is just like you know irresponsible drunk driver, they're not always gonna have insurance uh, and. If you don't have, you know, you can get additional coverage if you want, but if you don't have it, you're just, you know, fucked. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, being a magic streamer, opponent has just become term for you know, gender gender neutral stranger is now any 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 gender in any gender neutral stranger is just my opponent. <laughs> can you advise deck to play a modern? I get I get this uh, question a lot. Uh, what what deck do you want to play at Modern? But the thing about Modern is it, it, it is just such a personal and complicated format where a lot of people can find like a little bit of an identity, really, uh, picking a deck to play. And I, I would really hate to deprive you of that process of finding a deck that you like and finding a deck that speaks to you. So I would just encourage you to take some time before you select your Modern deck. Zab with the gift five pack. Thank you so much. Got a good first time from Zab. Make sure to thank him. Very nice of you. You can try to sue them. Yeah, but they, they, they don't have any money. <laughs> you, you know. Uh, Jarvis, the five packs. Thank you. I'm doing well. Good to hear from you. See you soon. Is it okay if you choose Lancer Control? Of course. People will enjoy the free wins. <laughs> Yeah, four mana, three, three. Go in the distance. We're in game two. My opponent has seven minutes on the clock left. Uh, show them that they're dead. Copying hearse creates a copy dies immediately. Does it, I think it, I think it creates a a non crude hearse if you copy hearse because if if you copy a mutavolt that's a creature, I believe it makes it a non creature mutavolt, but I'm not not actually sure. If I draw a land, I'll kill them with Hellraiser. Okay. Nar with the nine months. Thank you. Welcome back. So two, two, two owing living end is a blessing. Maybe playing against an opponent who plays as slow is not a blessing, but we'll take it. Two and one on the day. Keep going. Thank you, Nar. Let keep this. Pew Pew 29. Thank you. Welcome back. Yeah, very, very, very fun. Very fun birthday. Will likely remember forever or you know as long as i don't have brain damage from drunk drivers um any cool birthday gift esther got me uh a, a samsung watch which is nice because i've been exercising a lot more so to track my steps i had one friend who gave me an eclipsed themed package with sun chips and cosmic brownies and one other uh space theme snack. I can't remember which one.
Moon pie? I don't think it was a moon pie. I have no idea what a star crunch is. Would have been very flavorful. Will you cook something with Legion Extruder? I I can't remember what that card does. I will be we'll be working on the YouTube video, getting out as soon as I can. Sun Chip, yeah, well, there's it's a, a chip brand here in the states. I don't know if they have them everywhere. They're they're really good. I there's some of my I, not that I like eat a lot of chips, but when I do, I like Sun Chips. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I think I have to wildfire my own thing, which isn't exactly ideal. Do hit another land drop. You finally find no civilian. Like, yeah, I was playing one for a little bit for Lord Reveal, but it was just, it's just too many tap lands. You just can't really play them. Yeah, Satoru is really exciting. Satoru is probably the best card for the new set. I think the new Magda is also really good. I think the new Jace is really good. Lots, lots of good stuff. How's Blue Bell? I don't know. I haven't had ice cream in a long time. I'm lactose intolerant and <laughs> just ain't worth it, brother. I tell you what. Which I guess is my catchphrase. Yeah, I know. Dealing with insurance companies is so brutal. It's always such a pain. Last time, the last time I got in an accident was like six years ago, five years ago. And I, I got, I got T-boned by a lady going the wrong way down a one way street. And, um, and, uh, that her insurance company like really tried to fight me on, on the, on the, uh, issue. And I like, I like, I had the cops come and do an incident report and they, they just didn't, they just didn't do an incident report. And then I tried to like get like the cop who was on the scene to like, talk to the insurance company for me and he just won it. It's <laughs> lazy, lazy bastard. <laughs> just, just fucking would not, did not do an incident report, did not do shit. So funny. Yeah, most helpful police officer. <laughs> This time though they, they they you know <laughs> arrested the drunk driver. But it was <laughs> it was it was really funny because the, so the guy that hit us last night had you know a beer a beer can in his front seat <laughs> and uh, <laughs> a beer can in his front seat is like slurring his words or whatever. And then the the officer is like like almost like doing his like very best to, like keep a straight face and he's like, do you think he might have been intoxicated? <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, I, th I think you might have been. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's let this damage happen. Um, oh, shoot. I should have heated on the upkeep. I think it's okay, though, because I can just go Galvanic Blast one of the constructs and then heat the other one. And then even if they Welding Jar to save one, they're not going to be able to get out of this the, the problem the problem is I, th I think that their ring is probably going to draw them into like a ballistic hill before i can really stabilize but he was he was the cop was really trying to be like professional about the <laughs> the fact they do welding jar it's kind of weird i was i wasn't you know thinking they make me work for a little bit oh sorry i thought that this was going to give me delirium and it did not. So I guess it's good that they did that, huh? But I, I get to, I get delirium off the the ring, new ring. Sorry, I concussed. Friends of the thirty three months, they go come back. Ring and scales. Ring is like a, a totally reasonable scales card. Someone pop maybe started doing it. A year ago, but it, it's it's like a, it's a pretty viable flex spot. Uh, ring has a uh, scales has a lot of flex spots. The ring is a, a really good card in the deck. You can sacrifice it to Ravager if it's killing you. Uh, it's like the best card advantage spell you could play. It's 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 like probably way better than you might expect. So I think our best plan here is to try to hit bust off Hellraiser this next turn and then stabilize after that. If they have a ballista here, which they do have a ballista, we are uh, just dead. So we're gonna go to game. Game two. Let's 
So I don't have a ton for the matchup. We're going to bring the explosives and the charmals. I guess that's, you know, not a tiny amount either. I'm going to trim our Hellraiser. Maybe we've got the Archaeologists. They seem like they can be the weak link here. Kind of slow. Don't block super well. Yeah, so I was also trying to... When I was working on this deck, I'm like, Hellraiser collect evidence for. Boombus collect evidence for. And then there's also some self mills. So I was thinking about playing... Alt, I'm, I'm trying to figure out Hellraiser Lamplight combo. Kind of, uh, kind of stuck on it. Yeah, this is our first hibernation list. I, 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 you, you have to have a plan for Leyline Scion, and this is like the first deck that just doesn't have a, like a really different option. The plan versus graveyard hate. Ah, uh, you know, Fable and Wandering. It depends on the graveyard hate too, where it's like Rest in Peace and Leyline are like pretty dang good against you. Um, but you can also you also just like cast a Fable, cast a Wandering, six mana four four Hellraiser. Like re really, all that all that those cards do against you is like it makes Hellraiser six mana four four, which is not very good. It's kind of like against Snapcaster Mage, you know, like Rest in Peace against Snapcaster. Uh, because there'll be a win con and uh, turns off Delirium on Unholy Heat. You s oh, it also turns off Founding. But you still get the card off Archaeologist. And like the one use Graveyard Hate is like a little bit just easier to tank. Bring in Hibernation versus other decks. I mean, I would bring it in against like Elves. Uh, <laughs> I think that's probably about it. What is your new superpower? Yeah, I unfortunately, I don't think the Eclipse has given me any powers. But maybe the Drunk Driver did. I'm gonna keep... That's my civic. I don't know yet. Esther, so Esther has the day off. Uh she took she took the week off for Esther uh to like work on music and kind of unwind, but uh she said she was gonna try to talk to the insurance company today. Uh oh. <laughs> I knew this was gonna happen at some point. It's okay, I just whatever. I got more lands. <laughs> um if it happens again. Uh, so we'll, we'll see. We, it, it, I'm not sure. Cause like the, the, the back is really smashed up, but the, the rest of the card does seem to be, um, in very functional shape. So, so TBD, I guess. Who was driving? Esther was driving. She was DDing. There's any frame damage? Yeah, we'll see. It'll, it'll be okay, you know. Ultimately, just not that important. Airbags go off. Yeah, our airbags didn't go off, which, like, like his airbags went off and his car was like undrivable, but ours just didn't go off, which I thought was maybe a little concerning. So, drawing an untapped land to play a fable could be good here. What music does Esther make? So she's, um, Esther has been like a very talented singer for a long time. She was in choir, like all through high school and college. Um, but she never really knows, knew any instruments. Her mom is like a classically trained musician in the USSR, uh, before the USSR collapsed. Uh, but also like didn't teach Esther any music, but she's always like really, try, you know, wanted to get into music because of that. And, um, I think I'm just going to explosives on zero this turn cycle. You get to use my mana and get the welding jar out of there. Um, and I, sorry, I totally meant to get a mountain. That's actually a huge punt. I'm concussed. <laughs> uh, not, not actually. Um, and uh, so she's been learning piano and guitar, more, more so focusing on piano, but just trying to like learn instruments before starting to like actually make music if that makes sense not really any point in sacking the explosives now because it'll just sack the thopter and get the extra damage when is she redemptions esther loves to do the sing redemptions whenever she's like around <laughs> all right so they get the ravager up pretty big we should be able to heat it but then they just modular over so not sure if that's what we're going to do. They're, they're, they're kind of just stuck on mana. I feel like I should just boom them. Target the basic forest in case they have two besages. Tommy is safekeeping. All right. Target any permanent, huh? You hit for four. 
down to 11. Okay, so only one play available to us, but not the uh, not the worst play I've ever had to make. Nitrim with the 60 months, thank you so much. Welcome back. One monster dropping out from the spot. She's she's been writing songs and she's been doing music stuff, but she's pretty far away from. Or not me. I don't know. She's getting closer. She's she's really improving a lot. It's it's just really nice to see how how far she's come. She started probably a year ago starting to learn piano and guitar, and she's just come so far at this point. It's gonna be a tough game to win. Don't think I need to chump this turn. I think I will block the uh, automaton though and be okay if they like have to modular over to like Saxabaz modular over. I think that would be okay. Okay, yeah, I'm I'm also just very okay with that outcome. Then they do legend rule their Besaju. Be a bit better if that boom had resolved. They do a blista. Okay, I feel like they could have pre combated that. Okay. Going for the three two. Her mom's from the USSR. Yeah, I mean, from Azerbaijan, which, you know, at the time was part of the USSR. Anybody has any, like, red slash white cards that would fit into a build like that? Maybe we could chat about it. Let's see a lot of tap lands. Lean an Arbiter, maybe. I think on the draw, the boom is just kind of like, like, maybe a little slow. I, I will be getting the sub review probably out Thursday or Friday. Fall Thren sure does cost six mana, huh? Yeah, yeah, you, we would be basically cutting the ring for Suppression Field. And then it is kind of interesting, like, at that point, the Hellraiser is just kind of, like, the top of the curve. So, in, like, some ways that removes some pressure from the Hellraisers, but, like, still. But enabling, it's going to be much worse than the blue cards. I spent a long time trying to figure out Jeskai mana... Jeskai mana would maybe still work, but I, I, I'm not sure. Immercles for mill and also now Lamplight Phoenix combo. Could be the white version of Feel Eyes since it still mills. I remember feeling, I remember, like, what, what is, what is that? It doesn't hit just instants and source or not creatures. It hits, like, less relevant creatures or less relevant types, right? That was the Eclipse in Texas. It was, it was, we got to see it. Some places were too cloudy, but we were lucky and got to see it. Isn't just good, not that hard to do if Lord revealed in Bridges. Well, it's just like a ton of tap lands. And, and, and another issue, of course, is that, um, oh, you know what? I just shouldn't be jamming into the counter spell here. Should have this tabbed. Um, another, another issue is that you are, have, you have this like triple red card at the top of your curve, but you're also like not really casting it until turn four, turn five. So it could be fine. I would I would be maybe interested in doing something like cutting cutting the rings, trimming a land since the mana curve comes down, trimming the foundings, and then playing ephemerate plus um suppression field. Like three ephemerates maybe, not not four. I think I'm not gonna cycle this yet. I'm also I'm, my opponent's just missing land drops too. I'm I'm I think I'm just chilling. I think I I will play this island though to play around spell pierce, and then the extra ramp will make us even better against spell pierce. Okay, love to you know make the music counter spell on that. Do you keep E in seventy five? We do. I don't know. We'll we'll see. I I think this sounds like kind of fun to work at. Again, like so I I, I was looking at trying to build a just guy version earlier, and my. Okay, now, now I've drawn, you know, third or fourth, like, good thing to slam, which is slam one. Um, and it resolves. Nice. So, I was, like, I, I Ephemerate is really nice with Archaeologist and Hellraiser. The, the, my issue was, like, there weren't, like, any other white cards I wanted to play. Besides, but you get Flagstones, which is nice. Kind of spelled Rampant Growth. Hey, Rampant Growth, draw a card. There any playable collect evident cards that you remove cards you don't Hellraiser from the graveyard? That's that, that's usually not the problem with Hellraiser. It's usually not that your graveyard is just so full of stuff and you want to manipulate it. It's usually just getting nine cards is the the real hurdle to jump through. Okay, so opponent with kind of a non-functional hand. I think against uh, Merktide, typically I'd like to just kind of move away from the boom bust stuff because they can just operate off such little mana. We can play one still, though. Yippee, says Weedrew. I think 18 months. 
Okay, so let's just go copy. Anything with time series recently? No, not in a while. For you, you for like a long time, I've preferred like Inti and like red based Asmo list for a long for for a while instead of like the like um blue black or like the time save builds, but I mean, you could. So that's the brought back is you, you, if, if, I, I I feel like if you want to play brought back again, if I've misspelled, I'm concussed. Uh, if you want to play brought back, don't you need to play like just like twelve fetch lands is the minimum. This is Jess Wills Friend. We met a comic on Oscar. Awesome. Nice to nice to put a name to the username. Or a face to the username. And thank you again for the uh subbies. Okay, on the draw. Yeah, I think I think when the, the drunk driver hit me, it knocked all of the very tentative spelling abilities I had out of my brain, but thankfully it's not the most important things to have. Yeah, so, if, yeah, and then ephemerate is likely, see, we should see a doctor. <laughs> ephemerate is Likely going to be a three of here. I'm fine. I'm fine. Can they cast the heat? Another channeler. Three cards in their hand. Let's uh, be man efficient and block that Ragavan. Take a blast. After we play the bridge, we will need one more. To, like, blast a delirious channeler. We'll see what happens. I also have a archaeologist to help get Deliria, maybe. Just cutting the rings. And I think I think we have to cut the foundings for like mana curve considerations. And we just have kind of too many non incinerator sorcery. I guess it's kind of the same number. Uh, I mean this is like super fine, right? We yeah, we can find blue off of Fable or Lore and Reveal. We just don't get to Boombuster stuff anymore. My slamming. I think I think it's just very important that I stop them. Oh no, that gives that gave them delirium. I think I will just still kill the channeler because to, to me this seems like the way I'm losing this game is the the channeler beatdowns. I posted the white and red fly. Um, yeah, I mean, the card is just three mana. It's just not playable, unfortunately. Only hits artifacts, too. It's not enough hits. So they bolt my archaeologist so that they can get in with their Ragavan. Max of the 26th. Happy birthday. If they're doing great. Yeah, I think so. I, I'm, I'm, I, I, I've been putting a lot of work in myself lately. I've been working out a lot. I've been, you know, figuring out my style some. I'm liking the long hair and the new glasses I got. Like I'm going into my 30s well. Okay, they so decided not to cast Boom Buzz. They got one card left in their hand. Um, got some good draws, got some bad draws. This is a good draw, probably. Be a little short of casting next turn. I think I also I'd probably just take the hit from the Ragavan, right? How do you move your stops with one click? You have to have the lock unlocked. That's what you mean. Okay, so they can cycle this cleansing wildfire, but if they wildfire me, I get an island. So they'll probably wildfire themselves if they're savvy. Oh, they also can just not, I suppose. Um, okay, I'm going to discard. I mean, the archaeologist is so nice when they have a ragavan in their hand. Let me discard these two. And then let's not throw away our shaman just yet. We're down to eleven. Flip the saga. 
Nihiri the Harbinger. It's, it's, you can't play Nihiri if we're splashing Suppression Field. This, this is kind of one issue with, like, a, a lot of the cards you would want to play just get Suppression Field pretty bad. So they do take the trade, which is not uh, surprising, I suppose. I guess I could have drawn off the ring first. But if I find a burn spell, I'd still would probably rather kill the Channeler. I do have Metalcraft. These are still artifacts. Um... Let's go ahead and lead on... Oh, sorry. While we still... Oh, sorry. The ring is also an artifact. I'll, I'm going to lead on the blast, though. I think it's just good to try to kill the channeler uh, before they could like use a counterspell on something more relevant, maybe. Also, Reflection plus Archaeologist is pretty pretty dang nice. We find another Galvanic Blast, and then I'm going to just... Also, Hellraiser plus Reflection is pretty nice. Okay, only hit a Galvanic Blast. That's okay. Oh, and I misclicked through the trigger. Good thing I can't lose this game, but we have missed uh, four damage, I suppose. Probably still killing. I guess not killing next turn. Well, I guess it didn't matter, but they just get to bolt me three times and then I die to the ring. Good play. Brutal. Exact seized. Great play. All right, uh, let's let's go game three on the play. Maybe I should cut an archaeologist for another boom bust on the play, or for founding for another boom bust because you have a few less ways to use it. Yeah, really <laughs> went from going can't lose this to just dead. This looks pretty close. I could even see just playing the fourth ephemerate and still sticking to twenty four lands for the time being, and then we're like cutting. Four artifact duels for four flagstones, and then we're like we're like just base red splash archaeologist and ephemerates, and then we could also potentially play wear tear over hibernation in the sideboard or something like that. Looks interesting. Probably don't play Sokins on. I think we likely don't play the Cascade Bluffs. So we're playing less tap lands in this build, but we're still playing. We're still gonna play some tap lands because we need to play. Like four planes or something. Was the point of suppression field? Uh, it, it's a, a good card. Uh, that it, it, suppression field is a very good card that helps with the it, it compl gets complemented by the mana denial strategy that mostly doesn't see any play because it is very difficult to play. Um, it is it is just a difficult card to reg. Okay, I'm actually gonna lead on Stevens here because I want to be able to kill a turn one creature and then also play hers. Like I don't want to have to like. Play tap land, and they play Ragavan, and I have to kill the Ragavan. I can't resolve the hearse. Uh, but like it, it, the problem is like this card just like it, it's rare that you can meet the requirements of it. A little bit, I guess, a little awkward with lore and reveal, but not not the worst ever. I'm gonna save this also. Does does tax Lorian? They had three man running eleven life. Did you know I have the lender punt? Um. I had a, a one ring on two counters in play, which uh, would kill me. I think you still probably have to play Lauren. We could maybe, could maybe not. It's really important for Hellraiser, I feel. White opens up Dispatch Removal over Heat. Well, the problem is Heat like kills things on turn one, and uh, this doesn't, but it's an interesting thought. Yeah, maybe Lord Revealed Suppression Field is too much of a nombo. And if, if that's the case, we, like, it, it's not the worst to get rid of these, I guess. Because we, like, it's kind of like getting rid of more tap lands. I'm just going to add, like, you know, more theoretical lands to the deck. Probably still, maybe maybe playing last 23 with no actual four mana creatures. <laughs> okay, not the most in, in, impressive Underworld Breach I've ever seen. Is three mana for Bloodstone too expensive? I mean, Bloodstone's kind of weird in the deck, right? Where, I mean, we could play Lotus Field, I guess. I don't really think you want to play that without Lotus Field. My opponent says, oops, misclick. I'm probably just trying to play Iteration. I think I want to be able to double kill a creature if they play like another creature end of turn. So let's let's not blast yet. Can play the blue MDFC. 
That's true. It's just like it doesn't fix your mana very well. Uh, we could play one. Maybe. Oh yeah, Bloodsend's bad with our boom plan. Oh, oh yeah, with our bus plan too. We need we need our artifact lands to keep the the indestructible text on them. The plot tormenting voice lets you sack a land. Seems pretty juicy with black stones. Yeah, maybe. So like this, this also all like I started working on this deck because PT Bench texted me. It was like. What do you think about Flagstones or Shokair plus uh, Leyline of the Guild Pack plus Mind Collapse, which did sound super juicy, but also... Um... Not that good. Yeah, we, have the, we have, at the moment have no surveillance because there are too many tap lands. Um, but it, we we will get to play some tap. We 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 will get to play some in the flagstones build. We'll definitely we'll definitely play at least one, probably two. The spell snare. A uh, no. Wow. Next chef with 18 months. Thank you. Welcome back. Eighteen is a lot, huh? Yeah, yeah, Flexon's you know, has been good for us in the small pox deck. Chrome Courier is good. Three mana one one. When it enters the battlefield, reveal top two, one in the hand, one in the graveyard. If our artifact is put in your hand, gain three life. We're playing this card over Fable of the Beer Breaker, <laughs> or like, like is this is this Fable of the Beer Breaker quality? Because it kind of has to be for three mana spells, right? Like Prismari Command, maybe. Okay, uh, untap in. Our card cast these soon. Don't know if it's good. It's definitely not fable. Good thing of ephemeral targets. Yeah, it is a good ephemeral target. Just too much mana. I would want to drop Restful Bridge. I want to play. I, I definitely want to play nine targets for cleansing wildfire boom bust. Um, but yeah, it's just too many tap lands. We have we have like if we count Lord and Field, we have like thirteen tap lands, and so that's another th reason to like the flagstones build. But we'll we'll also get some surveillance with the flagstones build too, which is nice. Krinko's Buzz Cutter. That's spell snare and a null. Krinko's Buzz Cutter. It fits. It it like super fits. Might just like be better than Hellraiser. Or we could do something like we could even potentially just with Buzz Cutter just cut the blue. And then play like play like two Hellraisers as like top end. Oh, but then the ephemerates aren't good with no archaeologists. Okay, we'll keep we'll keep working on it. For each player, destroy up to one non-basic land player controls. For each land destroyed this way. Oh yeah, you don't get you don't get a basic because you don't actually get to destroy land. It does work with flagstones though. It does work with flagstones, so it's not like completely no synergy. I, I played against Buzzcutter not that long ago. It didn't look that bad. The white MDFC. Yeah, the white MDFC is actually playable. It's been better if you have, like, Lotus Field. Just, like, sack it and put it in the yard. Wall of Omens over Falahi. Yeah. It's just so much worse with uh, this guy. Yeah, the mana just gets so much better, so I, I I'm kind of on board, though. I think it's good to just keep jamming stuff so that we can eventually like double spell with two Hellraisers. 
kind of brutal to get spell pierce like this though maybe so maybe waiting a turn i don't know yeah i feel like we're gonna lose the breach eventually do you benefit rate for the og tormenting voices i don't know i i do i do think that the ephemerates aren't mandatory but they're good with buzz cutter they're good with hellraiser they're like you know i was thinking that it plus archaeologist was a really nice way to go also Yeah, I don't know if you want to play Avalanche Rider, but yeah, we we could yeah, we could maybe go we could you could go into like black and play Heartless Summoning. Isn't Charmel just better than Buzz Cutter? No, this card costs four mana, this card costs five mana. Four or five. Okay, let's concede to this breach and keep cooking. Solitude? Hmm. Solitude in your white based ephemery deck. Wild. So Solitude will seem like we can get there if we play... Thank <laughs> you.